Hello, welcome to worship online at Resurrection Lutheran Church. I'm Vicar Jonathan Fleischman, and in our service today, we'll be focusing on how we starve. Yes, we hunger for physical food, but our souls are starving for salvation. The good news of the gospel, that Jesus lived, died, and rose for you. We begin with our opening hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And And also with with you. you. Let us pray. O God, you reveal your mighty power, chiefly in showing mercy and kindness. Grant us the full measure of your grace, that we may obtain your promises and become partakers of your heavenly glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first scripture lesson is from the book of Genesis, chapter 41, beginning at verse 41. Here we see the Lord provides abundantly for our physical needs. So Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, said to Joseph, I hereby put you in charge of the whole land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh took his signet ring from his finger and put it on Joseph's finger. He dressed him in robes of fine linen and put a gold chain around his neck. He had him ride in a chariot as his second in command. And people shouted before him, Make way! Thus he put him in charge of the whole land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, I am Pharaoh, but without your word, no one will lift hand or foot in all Egypt. Pharaoh gave Joseph the name Zephenapaneah and gave him Azanah, daughter of Potiphar, priest of On, to be his wife. And Joseph went throughout the land of Egypt. Joseph was 30 years old when he entered the service of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from Pharaoh's presence and traveled throughout Egypt. During the seven years of abundance, the land produced plentifully. Joseph collected all the food produced in those seven years of abundance in Egypt and stored it in the cities. In each city, he put the food grown in the fields surrounding it. Joseph stored up huge quantities of grain, like the sand of the sea. It was so much that he stopped keeping records because it was beyond measure. This is the word of the Lord. The psalm is Psalm 42 and 43. Take note from the service folder of those verses that will be sung by the cantor and those by the congregation. Notice in this psalm how God provides for our spiritual needs and so our souls starve for his salvation. The second lesson is from 1 Timothy chapter 4, beginning at verse 4. We see God has given everything for our good, physical and spiritual. 
For everything God created is good, and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving, because it is consecrated by the word of God and prayer. This is the word of the Lord. In anticipation of hearing the words of Jesus in the gospel lesson, please stand. Alleluia. Jesus replied, if anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. My Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Alleluia. The Gospel according to the book of Matthew, chapter 14. When crowds heard what had happened, he, Jesus, withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place, and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. We have here only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here to me, he said. And he directed the people to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about 5,000 men, besides women and children. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be to you, you O Christ. Christ. We confess the Christian faith with the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated for the hymn of the day.
Grace, mercy, and peace are yours in abundance through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, dear Christian friends. Mom, I'm hungry. How many times do you think a parent's heard that phrase? I know that time and time again. I drove my mom crazy saying that. As a kid grows, they need food so that they get the nutrients to grow big and strong. Now, food's important for everyone. We need the food to give us the calories and the nutrients to make it through the day. Before Jesus in the gospel for today, we see that there was a crowd of 5,000 people before him who were starving. We know that it wasn't just for food that they were hungry for. Notice how long they were standing there. The disciples had to come up to Jesus and say, Hey, Jesus, send them away. We don't have any food to give them. All we have here are five loaves of bread and two fish. But Jesus looked at the crowd and he had compassion on them. Even though they only had this boy's meal, which would feed this boy lunch, maybe dinner. If you think about it, there's a lot of people standing there. It says there's 5,000 men and there's women and children. So if most of the men brought their wives and some of them even brought their children. I mean, we're looking at at least 10,000 people. This is the size of Verona. And all these people are standing before Jesus, hungry. But Jesus looked to them and had compassion on them. Now, the word here for compassion is an interesting word. If you excuse my nerdiness for just one moment. In the Greek, the word there is comes from a word talking about your insides, like your spleen or your kidney. So it would be as if all of Jesus' insides felt for the people. Now, maybe in more modern terms, when we see a really tragic scene, like a horrific car accident or the death of a small child, we say that our heart aches for them or that we feel it in our soul. Well, this is the feeling that Jesus had for the people. Jesus looked on the crowds, and he had compassion on them. But compassion is just an emotion, right? So if Jesus had compassion on them, what does that mean to us? If we make a large claim, people are going to want us to prove it, right? Back it up. We have the saying, actions speak louder than words. So if I were to stand here and tell you, I can do a handstand for 24 hours straight, would you believe me? I think if I were you, I would want you, me to prove it to you. Well, I have to confess that I can't even do a handstand for 24 seconds, let alone a whole day. So Jesus makes his claim that he has compassion on the people, and he demonstrates this. First, we hear about how he healed their sick. And then, on top, of the, on top of that, he took care of their hunger. He fed them with this small amount of food. Now, this miraculous feeding tells us two things about Jesus. First, that Jesus is God. And second, that Jesus acts on his compassion. Besides looking at the rest of Scripture where it tells us that Jesus is God... We have to know that Jesus is God here because only God can do something like this. There was such a small amount of food, and he fed so many people. And we know that our Savior doesn't just sit on the sidelines. He cares for us, giving us what we need. And we're just like that crowd of 5,000, aren't we? We're hungry. We need food. And our Lord gives us his great promises that he'll feed us. Our Savior tells us to pray for food. Give us this day our daily bread. And he also promises to us that God takes care of the sparrows, and the sparrow is worth way less than you are. So how much more will God richly bless you? He even counts the hairs on your head. And on top of that, we hear the promise that God causes the sun to shine on both the good and the bad. 
He, causes, he sends rain on both the righteous and the unrighteous. Well, does it always feel like God's taking care of us? It can seem hard at times when you're driving down the street and you see a homeless person on the side of the road starving. Or you hear on the news a giant storm has destroyed an entire city. Thousands are left without houses and they're struggling to feed them. Or you can see the diseases running rampant in our world and people are getting sick, their health's gone, people are dying. It causes out to us to doubt, to worry. Where is God? Jesus promised to be with us always, didn't he? Where is he? We doubt and we worry, putting that above the promises of God. But God, Jesus has compassion on us. He cares for us so much, he took care of our greatest need. The times we sin, when we doubt and we worry, God has forgiven us. He's given us that sweet food of the gospel, telling us that he sent his son, Jesus, to come into this world, live a perfect life in our place, to suffer and die, and then rise again. He took care of our greatest need. He destroyed death forever. If God's able to hold this promise, taking care of our greatest enemy, he'll hold to his other promises. When he tells us to pray for our daily bread, he didn't tell us that just because it sounds nice. But no, he answers our prayers. He hears us. Now, the answers to our prayer might not come in the way we're expecting. It's not like, that every day Jesus takes this tiny amount of food and feeds entire populations, but he provides. He puts people in our lives that help take care of us. We have friends and family who see us in need and give us the help that we need. We have fellow Christians who we can talk to, who hear our concerns. There's even organizations that God provides for that take care when disaster strikes. So we know that God goes through the greatest lengths just to take care of our earthly needs. When you're hungry, it's not a great feeling, is it? Your stomach rumbles, and not only is it a little embarrassing if someone hears it, but you're so uncomfortable for that entire time. All you can think about is food, and you can't focus on anything else. You're lacking energy, and even being not eating enough is horrible for your health. Well, we know that the same is true with our souls. Not only is it important to feed our stomachs, but to feed our souls with the gospel, the good news that God has forgiven us. Well, the crowd there of 5,000 people were starving. Yes, they were really hungry, but also their souls were starving. In St. Mark's Gospel, we hear that Jesus had compassion on the people because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. The, the analogy of a sheep is common throughout Scripture. We'll see it in various places. And we can see why, because if you look at the occupations of the time during Jesus, there were many shepherds, and sheep were abundant. Well, if you've ever seen, seen a sheep, you can tell that they're helpless. I had a friend who raised sheep, and as you looked at them, you can see that if a predator got to them, they wouldn't stand a chance. And on top of that, you had to take care of all their needs. They had to be fed and cleaned. Now, imagine them out in an open field all by themselves. They would be in great danger. They'd be searching for food everywhere. Predators would be all around. They'd be open to the elements. And on top of that, they're a danger to themselves. Sheep are known to even wander off cliffs. Well, 
Just as Jesus saw the 5,000 as harassed and helpless, we can be like that too. Our great shepherd Jesus holds out food in his hand to us. But how often don't we deny that open hand? We've been blessed here to have so many opportunities to study God's word. We hear it in worship. We have Bible classes. There's Bible information class, Sunday school, vacation Bible school, Christmas for kids. And yet, at these opportunities, I know I can even find myself grumbling at this life-saving news. I'll be sitting in my apartment There's an online devotion just about to happen, and what happens? I grumble. I'm upset that whatever I was doing is getting interrupted. That seems kind of ridiculous, doesn't it? I mean, we're so careful to get all the meals we need, right? I mean, I think I even eat four meals a day, and I never miss a meal. But yet, we deny our souls the salvation it needs. Our souls salivate for this salvation, the good news of Jesus forgiving our sins. But Jesus doesn't turn a blind eye when we turn a blind eye to these opportunities. Jesus forgives us. He gives us these opportunities to hear time and time again that our sins are forgiven, even those times when we don't want to hear that. Our souls are hungry. And we need to hear that good news. And so, as we get the opportunity, what a blessing it is. We have these opportunities. And even God's word comes to us from many people. We can hear it said from family and friends, from our neighbors, from pastors and teachers. And what a blessing it is that the Bible is so readily available to us. We can find it online. Or we have our own physical copy. God has richly blessed us in great abundance. Just like after the feeding of all those people, there was even 12 basketfuls of leftovers, we too have been blessed in abundance. God so richly blesses us with his love. We hear the good news in great abundance, and God provides for our needs more than we could ever have any need for So with this abundance, we now have the opportunity to share with others. There's other people out there that are harassed and helpless, like a sheep without a shepherd. So we have the opportunity to go to the harassed, those who hear false doctrine and are following it, and we can help them out by telling them the truth. We see many out there who are helpless, who are in need, and we can give them a hand as best as we can. God has so richly blessed us in abundance. Our souls are starving. I know I've talked about food a lot, so your stomachs might be rumbling, but know that you are well fed, for Jesus has compassion for you and for me. He takes care of our greatest needs. He takes care of our starving stomachs and our starving souls with the great gospel that Jesus has lived, died, and rose again, that we might be forgiven. Take heart in knowing that God has promised to feed your soul all the way up to salvation. What great blessing it is to know that our Savior has compassion on us. Amen. We continue with the Create in Me.
Having heard the word proclaimed, let us pray for ourselves, for all the faithful, and for all people as they have need. For all people, that they may have faith in Christ and heed the voice of God calling by his word. For the church, that the people of God may pursue righteousness with peace and joy in their hearts. And for all pastors and their ministry of word and sacrament, and for all who serve in the ministry, that the lives of God's people may redound to his praise and glory, let us pray to the Lord. For our president, congress, governor, and all civic leaders in their pursuit of peace and unity, for all judges in their pursuit of justice with mercy, and for those who protect us from violence and preserve order here and everywhere, let us pray to the Lord. For all families and children, single adults and youth, for those who teach and those who learn, that they may advance in wisdom and grace, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. Amen. We join in the Lord's Prayer. Our, Our Father, Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We'll join in the closing hymn.
Thanks so much for joining us. So happy you could hear the good news of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Please, if you would, fill in the connection card that's part of the description connected with this video. If you haven't yet done so, if you wouldn't mind subscribing to this channel and sign up for notifications. We not only do weekly online worship, but we also have devotional videos that are shared throughout the week that can help you stay in touch with God's Word. Thanks again for joining us. Please be with us again.